little algebra two students and welcome back to chapter nine okay oh i didn't want to do all that uh welcome back to chapter nine we're going to be doing 9.2 today this is all part of your assignment after you're done with uh the chapter eight test uh so you already did 9.1 yes you do need to do 9.1 first so make sure that you've watched that video first okay and then uh we're going to do 9.2 which is uh multiplying and dividing uh, these rational expressions that we were doing with before, which remember what a rational expression is, is uh, just some ratio. It's a ratio of polynomials. Okay, it's not too bad. This is actually going to be a, a lot easier in a lot of senses than 9.1 here. Um, so when we think about like multiplying fractions and things like that, what we've done in the past is we cross canceled, right? Like if you saw this in uh, pre-algebra your teacher probably told you okay can this three cancel out with anything below it well three doesn't go under 25 okay uh does this three share anything with the 12 well yeah three and 12 cancel this would make this a four and this a one well here 25 and 15 do those share anything well yeah this would go at five would go into that five times and three times right now the last thing i should check is does this three share anything with this thing down here and it doesn't and when we finalize this right we just multiply straight across so i would take one times three which would be a three and then i would divide by oh whatever five times four is which is 20 and then there's my answer right we've done this kind of stuff before okay well what do we do when we divide fractions well this is where typically okay we do six Eights, and instead of dividing by a fraction, it'd be really nice if this right here wasn't a division sign, it was a multiplication sign, which actually I can get away with if I reciprocate the second, the following, or the, I shouldn't even say the second, the divisor gets uh, reciprocated. Then once you have this, again, same type of thing, six and eight, oh, this becomes a three, this becomes a four. Three and 18, oh, those go too. This and this, that's gone. It's just a one now. This is a six. Okay, well, what, four and 14, that'd be a seven and a two. Anything else? Well, do not make this mistake now. Two and six, I can't do that. They're in the same level, right? They're in the same level there. Can't ever cancel things in the same level, which means I'm just stuck. Okay, well, take the top. That's one times seven. That's seven. And now I take the bottom. I can get a color that I haven't used down here, and that'd be 12. And we can final check it, right? Does 7 twelfths simplify? No. Now, this is stuff that you've done before, right, with numbers. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that stuff, but with polynomials. So some simple steps. Now's the time to pause the video and write these down. I'm not going to read them out to you, okay? Well, now that you've had a chance to write them down, big thing here you can simplify diagonally and vertically never on the same level okay things on the same level don't cancel all right so here we go it says find the product of these two right i only have two examples here we're only going to do these two big thing here is we've got to stay excluded values well already here we go all right so here at the start when you have monomials like this, okay, before I did a bunch of canceling, here with monomials, I actually think it's much easier to just do the numbers first. So 4 and 12, that makes this a 3. This 3 and this 9 cancel makes this a 3. First thing I want to do is that. Then actually with monomials only, this is only monomials that I do this. I'm going to just take the tops times each other. So I'd have, what, 3x to the 5th times x squared would be x to the 7th. y squared times y to the 5th is y to the 7th divided by, okay, well, what's on the bottom now? Okay, well, I'm looking at this. Well, nothing there. I got an 8x to the 1st there, so that'd be x to the 5th after I multiply it. y to the 6th times y to the 3rd is y to the 9th. I like to do this. Only on monos again, only on monomials. Here I've already canceled the 3 and the 8. 
Well, then clearly I'm going to have a 3 up top and an 8 down here on the bottom. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I actually think I'll do the excluded values too. What makes the bottom here 0? Well, clearly x and y. Oh, well, then x and y just can't be 0. Okay, that's not that hard. And now I'm ready to cancel some things. All five of these go with five of those, making it a two. All seven of those come down here, cancel that to make this a two. Well, what's left? I have x squared up top and y squared on the bottom. Quick little check here. Does anything cancel up and down? Nope. And I have my excluded values on the end there. All right, let's try the second one here. Same type of thing, okay? I think I'll simplify first. So this 20 becomes a 10, shares with that 6. I think I'll put the negative on the 10 just so I don't forget about it there. This will become a 3. Uh, anything else? Oh, this negative 10 and this 8 share a 2, so this would become a 4 and a negative 5. I don't think anything else shares. So now I'm going to multiply the tops, which will be a negative 5. Oh, but it's a negative 5 times this negative, which will make this a positive. And I have x to the first times x to the fourth is x to the fifth. And y to the third. Then on the bottom here, I've got 3 times 4 is 12. x to the eighth, x to the ninth makes x to the seventeenth. y to the tenth, y to the eighth makes y to the eighteenth. Get to here. State your excluded values quick. Well, I can't have x and y, again, be equal to 0. Now I just cancel stuff out. 5 goes with that, makes it a 12. Oh, 3 of those comes down here, makes that a 15. What's left? 5 on top, 12, x to the 12, y to the 15th. And again, all of that is my final answer. All right, moving on now. Okay, that was with monomials. Now we're going to do this with polynomials, right? Uh, big thing, only real difference here is uh, we just need to factor. Okay, just make sure you're factoring. Okay, when you're factoring, sorry, I had to go back check some real quick. When you're factoring, okay, you just got to factor the top and bottom. Just make sure you're doing that. Okay, and then just double check your final. Uh, let's see if we can try to tackle one of these. Again, now is a great time. Pause the video. Make sure you get this stuff written down before you're trying to watch me do it. Here I have a very unique method on how I do this. Okay, You will see me take these things here. Oh, wow, that's a terrible circle job. I will take this thing here, and I'm just going to factor it right above it. Okay, Rather than having to rewrite this whole thing all the time. Okay. I will just factor this right about what comes out of these. 3x, I think, comes out. So there's a, what, there would be an x left there plus 1. Again, same type of stuff going on here. I'll try to use a different color if I can for each one. This, I'm trying to factor that. That would be x, x, factors of 3, or of 9 that add to 6. I think that's 3 and 3. Both have to be the same sign, so they're both negatives. This, okay, draw it, x, x, factors of 3 that add to 4, oh, 3, 1, both have to be negative. Here, I think an x comes out of those, and I'll be left with this stuff. Now, I factored it out, right? This is completely factored form right now, staring at us. In fact, all of this is gone. This is all gone. And this is like a giant division sign, right? Like, I mean, if I kept coloring this over and over and over and over and over and over again, it would be a giant division sign. Okay, well, if I do that, then this whole bot, this is all the bottom. Well, I know that I'm going to have to do these excluded values, right? I got it drawn right here. That yellow is terrible. Let's get a different color here. The excluded values. Well, what's, what means I have to worry about all of this stuff? Oh, the excluded values make the bottom zero. Well, that would be x can't be what neg or a positive three for this one and this one. Okay, x can't be zero for the next one. This right here, and x can't be one for the one after that. 
and I've already knocked out my excluded values. Now that I've done that, I can actually just go through and I can just worry about looking at the top, right? Because all this is on top and all this is on the bottom. So now I'm just thinking, does anything match up? Well, I, see, I see an x minus 3, x minus 3, x minus 1, x minus 1. This x cancels with this x. This 3 cannot cancel down here. What do I have left on top? Well, it looks like just a 3 times x plus 1. And then on the bottom, I have an x minus 3. Okay, and there's my answer. Great time to pause the video and really go back and see how I did that problem there. All right, well, let's try another example here. So here, I kind of want to do the same thing. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I'd like to make this over 1. Okay, I want to make that over 1 just for a good little reference point here for me. Uh, and then I want to factor stuff, right? I think this is as simple as it gets, so maybe I factor this out. Do I know factors of 10 that subtract to give me 3? Well, I think that's 5 and 2. Subtract, okay, positive 5, negative 2, great. Now, here this one's a little bit trickier to kind of like grab, right? Like this part up here, I didn't do anything with, right? And technically, I didn't do anything with this one. Now, this is gone, right? And I, last time, I kind of color that perfectly. Like, that's the division sign. And then technically, it kind of just goes down here a little bit. And this is the division sign, right? Kind of seeing how I'm doing there, OK? Now, because it works like that, right? We're just multiplying across. We get that. Now, I should take the time to state my excluded values. This one does nothing to it. But here, I don't think x can be, what, negative 5 would make that a problem, or, what, 2. Okay, done with that, great. Now I just have to stare at it and look to see if there's anything that matches. Well, this 4x squared is not going anywhere with anything down here. But this x squared, or x minus 2 and x minus 2 are. So what's left? 4x squared over x plus 5. And then I'll just caution you. This is the answer. You cannot cancel this x with one of these because this x is tied to the 5 through addition. I would really like it if you would try this next one out here on your own. Okay, pause the video, get it written down, and then try it out on your own. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try that out, I think I'll go through it. This part here, I'll factor, that's 6x times x minus 3. And working my way over, this does factor. Yeah, you're not allowed to just skip this stuff. That's 2x. Uh, I need to get a 7, so I think I need this 3 over here. They're both positive. Again, simple check here. 1 times x would be 1. 2 times 3 would be 6. 6 and 1 do make 7. Great. Go down to the bottom side here. These are perfect squares. So we have our 2x, 2x, 1, 1, positive, negative. We've done this stuff so many times. You should be an expert there. And this bottom part, 6x, is the mono meal that comes out, which would be a 2x squared minus 1. Can I do what I did over here? Well, is 2 a perfect square? No. Done. Stop right there. If it's not a perfect square, you're done. Okay? And what I did is, oh, after I'm done doing this, right, this is a multiplication sign here. So I'm good. This is all gone. And this is just a giant division sign. Again, I think you guys are probably getting the hang of this here. I don't need to try to color it in, but that's a giant division sign now. Okay? And I need to take the time right now to go through and do my excluded values. So the excluded values, this is a plus 1. I know it looks a little weird. So when I were to solve that, x cannot be, well, I'd move the 1. That'd be negative 1. And then I'd have to divide by 2. So it'd be negative 1 half. What's well, the opposite over here, right? This is where you'll get used to this. So you just do plus or minus. Okay. 
You can work through that math, though. That's not terrible. X here, 6X. Oh, X can't be 0 then for that one. Now here, maybe I'll do this one here. 2X squared minus 1 can't equal 0. So 2X squared can't equal 1. Divide by 2. 2X two squared cannot equal 1 half. How do you finish this? Square root it. Square root it. Oh, that doesn't square root. Here, we have to write this out. What would that be? That would be the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. Not allowed to leave that. You have to multiply it by radical 2, which gives me radical 2 over 2. Don't forget your plus or minus. This thing here also, oh, I went a little too high. This thing here also belongs over here. So I have to write it again, plus or minus radical 2 over 2. Now I have my excluded values. That's nice. And I'm ready to start canceling stuff. So this one goes with this. And I don't, oh, this 6x goes with this 6x. And I don't really see anything else. So I think I'm stuck. So might as well write it out. Double check the top and the bottom. Yeah, I don't think any can cancels. And this whole big thing is my answer. Great time to pause the video. Those were all multiplications. Okay, those were all multiplications. The next examples are going to be division. So here we are going to do the same type of stuff. Okay, big thing here is we're reciprocating the second fraction. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go through these steps. You can pause the video, rewrite them. We have three examples to get through here, and then we'll be done. We're coming up on about a 20-minute video again, which is about what I wanted, 20 minutes for each of the sections. So we're right on pace. Here again, I'll kind of show you my method. You're welcome to try it out. Okay, do it your own way. But here, I do see that this is a division sign. So maybe actually instead of circling what I did there, maybe I'll start with this. Here, I would, I don't want this to be a division. I want this to be a multiplication. But in order to make it a multiplication, this bottom has to become the top, right? So when I do this, what you'll see me do is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to factor it and put it right up top. Okay, I'm going to put it up top because I'm reciprocating it. So x and x, factors of 8, that subtract give me 2, that's 4 and 2 negative 4, positive 2, okay? And I've done that. That's not that difficult, right? I know that this is going to be the reciprocal, so the bottom becomes the top, and the top is going to become the bottom. Oh, what comes out of these? 3x, x plus 3. Again, not a terrible thing right there. Just kind of tackling that thing first. Now it's a multiplication. It's just like the ones we did. I just need to factor this. I think those are factors of 3 and 5. Got that. Good. We're feeling pretty good. Do this one. X plus factors of 10 that make 7. I think that's 5 and 2. And remember now, this basically all goes away. As long as this is a multiplication sign, which we did change by reciprocating this. So this is just like we just did. This is a giant division problem, or a, a giant fraction right here. Okay, with giant fraction right here. Which when I do that, I just don't want to forget to do the excluded values. So the excluded values, what can x not be? x can't be negative 5, negative 2, 0, or negative 3. Okay. I know it's kind of sloppy, but I, I think you guys can get that there. This is x min or x plus 5 and x plus 5 gone. x plus 3, x plus 3 gone. x plus 2, x plus 2 gone. What's left? x minus 4 on top. And 3x. Piece of cake. Okay, and technically all of this is your answer. Alright, let's try another one here. Again, you can try this out on your own. Just make sure you pause the video. So, you tried it out on your own. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'd like to make this into a multiplication sign, which means the bottom needs to become the top. 
notice I can't factor it, so I just write it. And then this top needs to become the bottom. This does factor. No, you can't skip on this part. It's a 2x and an x. Factors of 2. Oh, well, 2 and a 1. I need a negative, so this has got to be negative over here and positive. Yeah, I think you guys should be pretty good at factoring by now. If you need to see those videos again, go to chapter 4. Uh, the first fraction always stays where it is. It's a terrible parenthesis. Uh, I'd have a 2 that's negative and then a positive 1. And this bottom, well, they share a 3x. Take that out. And once I do this, again, this is a big multiplication sign, which means I'm okay to just make this one giant fraction. I take the time to find my excluded values. X can't be 0, negative 2. Or, oh, this one gives a positive 2. So can, I think I'll just do plus or minus 2. And then this other one, I'd move the 1. That'd be negative. 1 over, oh, I'd divide by 2. Great. Now I go through and I cancel stuff if I can. This x minus 2, x minus 2. 3x goes with one of those and makes this a 3. And then I think I'm done. So I have 3 times x plus 1 over x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. And technically, all of this is my answer. Okay. Well, a little bit over 20 minutes, about 22 minutes, but that's okay because I do want to get through this last one. All right, we're going to get through this last one. So here we go. Again, I want to make this a multiplication sign. Put this up top. Put this down at the bottom. Factor it as I go. This stays where it is. Okay. I think I'll do this. And this, I get a 2x come out. So that's an x squared minus 2. Oh, man, I see that this factors again. Oh, no, it doesn't because a 2 is a two is not a perfect square, so it won't factor. Great. This became a giant multiplication sign, which means this is a giant division sign. I take the time to do my excluded values. X cannot be 0 for this one over here, 2 for this guy, or negative 2. Oh, well, what I did last time was I did plus or minus. This time I'll just write them out. Here when I'm looking at it, let's see. This negative 5, so this 5 will cancel with this 15, makes it a 3. This x will go with this x. Can I take this x minus 2 and this one? Well, no, this one's got a square. So I'm kind of stuck. But be careful now. This is a 2 times this 3 would make a 6. x to the 4th is out here with it. x squared minus 2 up top divided by what's on the bottom. I'd have that negative sign out front, x minus 2, and x plus 2. And just not a whole lot canceled here. So I'm stuck with all of it. Don't forget my parentheses there at the end. And that completes 9.2. Okay, so up to here, you should be a master at multiplying, dividing, and simplifying. What have we been working with? Well, rational expressions. We also are very good now with excluded values. Okay, so we should be really good with this stuff.